So I came across a nice little reference table today using Power Query uh, in Excel to, to scrape a web source that contains South African public holidays, but you can, as long as that information is available on the web, you can use virtually any website. And um, I essentially also pass in a year parameter and that allows me to get back a list of public holidays for the corresponding year. Um, what's nice about the, the little query is it's copyable into different workbooks and I only need to build it once, pass in a year parameter or a specific parameter that, that, that basically determines the year and that will bring back a list of public holidays for that specific year. So I'm going to show you how to do that using Excel and Power Query. So firstly, I need to find a list of public holidays and I just searched public holidays 2022 and that brings back a couple of results on Google. I like using this site, publicholidays.co.za and that's got a little table in there with all the public holidays. Now I can go and copy this into Excel but that would mean I need to do that every time I want to use it and it might also cause me to have to do a bit of transformation on this. Power Query does all that for me. If I go to data, the data tab, I can click on from web. So get data from web. And that will bring up a little URL box and I can click on OK. Then next up, I want to determine how I want to access the co content. And in this case, I want to do it anonymously, but that also allows me to connect to web APIs, etc., or even organizational accounts if you want to connect to intranets. So I'm just going to click on connect. And that'll connect to the website itself. Document, the document is an HTML sort of header, but table zero contains exactly the information that I need. Because I need to do some transformation uh, on this, I want to go into transform data and that'll open up the Power Query window. Once I'm in the Power Query window, I want to fix this date, but firstly, I want to just remove the last row so i'm just going to say remove bottom rows and i want to remove the one row from the bottom next up i want to rebuild this date so that it includes the actual year and i want to make sure that this is a an actual date one once it passes back into into excel so i'm going to add a column a custom column and i'm going to call it full date for now i'm going to pass in the date parameter and then I'm also going to add a little year to this. Click on OK, and that rebuilds the full date for me. I can reorder the columns, and I can drop this column by clicking on Remove, or right-clicking and click on, clicking on Remove. Next, next up, I can change this type into a date. And I can change the name of this back to date. And I can also rename this query into holidays. That should do it. Um, so next up, I can just go and close and load that to Excel. And I want to pass it as a table into the existing workbook, maybe over there, because I just want to allow some space for input for an input for the year. That will run the query, extract the information from the, the website, and bring back the result. That's perfect. So next up, I want to put in a little year parameter. And for this year parameter, I want to make it so that it looks like an input cell. And that would be ready. Now I want to change the look and feel of this table a little bit to fit in with the look and feel of the, of the actual uh, input cell. So that looks, that's looking nice. And then I typically just go and change up these things. And when it's a reference table, I like just hiding stuff around it so that it doesn't, so that it doesn't, so that the, the reader can see or the user can see that this is a reference table. I've also used the shortcut Alt WVG just to hide the grid lines and, um, now I'm just going to input my year as 2022 over here. For this, I want to also rename this to a named range called year. And I can then go back into my Power Query. And now I need to read that named range's value 
and replace that into this little um, model. I can right click on the query and go into the to, into the advanced stuff and you can see each one of the steps will be written out as as a step. And this is called M language, Power Query's M language. So I'm going to create a little year parameter. And for that, I'm going to use something that I never remember off by heart. So I always need to go back and Google it. So how do you Google it? You can literally go and Google how to reference a named range in Power Query. And that gives you this exact information. You can go and copy that and you can paste it just inside here and you can go and make that one line of data like this. So just to unpack what that does is it takes the current workbook in Excel. It gets a name called in this case here, because that's the name we gave to the to the name range. It gets the content from that from the first value. So the first row is re referenced as a zero because it's an array. Um, and then the first column. So you can actually pass back a whole array of information and, deter and, and, and actually tell Excel which row and column to reference. And that will, that will assign that to the year. I also want to make sure that that is a number that is converted to text. So I can just go number and then, sorry, number to text. And I've just put a little space or two there just so that it doesn't remove the Excel part, um, if it's if it's directly next to it, the IntelliSense sometimes removes the the Excel part, and then I'll just wrap that in in columns like that or in um, brackets like that. I then want to make sure that my URL contains that date, so I'm going to go and put two inverted commas, two ampersands, and in between that, I want to put in that year parameter that I've just created. So you could put some spaces in there as well, just to make it easier to read. And then I also want to do the same where I've added the year to this date. And that, if I've done it correctly, should work for us, hopefully. And that seems to have worked. So that now gets a year parameter from the Excel, from the Excel named range. And then passes it into my source, or passes it into my public holiday source, takes or gets the, the exact data back, and and also adds my adds my custom column with the 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 correct year. So I can go back to Excel, and now I can go and test my my little query and see if that works. One thing that I that I see that that just happened is um, tables tend to when they refresh. They tend to auto uh, auto fit the columns. So I like just going into table design and unticking this. That's my preference. Maybe it's not yours. So that I can expand these columns as I please. And ultimately they won't they won't auto fit on refresh. And I can change this to 2021, for instance. And if I refresh this. It will bring back 2021. You can see all the dates are 2021. And if I change this to 2020, then it does the same thing. So that's a, a nifty little uh, model that I can now go and use. It's copyable. You can actually go and copy a query across. You can copy the sheet across, or you can just have a little reference sheet in there. And, um, and you can always use this reference sheet in any model that you need holidays for. So yeah, I can change this back to 2022 and there I've got all my holidays for this specific year. If you like this video, please, um, please like, subscribe, comment. Um, and I'm also going to leave a little Google form at the bottom of this video. Uh, if you, if you have any ideas for me for upcoming content, if there's anything that you want me to cover, please let me know, um, in the comments or in the Google form. And I'd be happy to uh, happy to cover the, those topics. Um, have a good one. Thanks.